Now that we've learned some differences between organic and inorganic compounds, we're going to focus on three major topics. The first topic will be the classification of organic compounds. Classifying the organic compounds will help us to learn the second topic, which is naming organic compounds by their class. And finally, we'll learn how to do the reactions of organic chemistry by understanding which classes do what types of reactions. So let's start with the basics of classification. We've already learned our first step of classification, which is to identify the compound as an organic chemical. That means it has carbon and hydrogen at a minimum. Our next step of classification will be to separate it into hydrocarbon, which are compounds that have only hydrogen and carbon, and functionalized organic compounds. Those are compounds that have other elements present, like halogens, oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen. For the moment, we will only focus on the hydrocarbons. Focusing on the hydrocarbons, the ones with only carbon and hydrogen, we're going to see that we have two major categories. They are aromatic and aliphatic. The aromatic compounds are the ones that have this six-membered ring that you see here. Sometimes this is drawn as a six-membered ring with no hydrogen showing and not even showing those double bonds. Those double bonds will just be one ring because it's all blended together. The aliphatic hydrocarbons are the ones that have carbon and hydrogen, but do not contain a benzene ring. So far, we've identified our substance as a compound, and from there, we've identified it as an organic compound because it is composed of carbon and hydrogen and maybe some other substances. From there, we identified our substance as a hydrocarbon because it has only hydrogen and carbon and no other elements. Now, let's go to the next level. Looking at the structure, we can tell if the compound is aromatic or aliphatic. For the aromatic compound, you will see some sort of benzene ring, which is that six-membered ring with a circle in the middle. For the aliphatic compounds, you will not see that. For the category of aromatic hydrocarbon, you will not be asked anything about how to name these compounds, just to identify whether a compound has a benzene ring or does not have it. When we look at this, it could be a long hydrocarbon chain if it has one benzene on it, it is considered an aromatic hydrocarbon. Remember, the shape of that aromatic group can be a six-membered ring with alternating single and double bonds, or it may often be drawn as a six-membered ring with a circle in the middle. The reason the aromatic ring uses a circle in the middle is to indicate how quickly the electrons are moving from one position to another. When those electrons move from position to position, it becomes difficult to tell which one has a single bond and which one has a double bond. So we write it simply as a circle in the middle. So far, we know that our substance is a compound. We know that it's an organic compound because it does have carbon and hydrogen. And we know that it's a hydrocarbon because it has only carbon and hydrogen. Now we can categorize that compound as either aromatic or aliphatic. Recall that the aromatic compounds do have a benzene ring and the aliphatic ones do not. We're now going to focus our attention on the aliphatic compounds. A subcategorization of aliphatic hydrocarbons is to decide whether the compound is cyclic or acyclic. A cyclic compound simply has a carbon ring that goes around and catches itself on the other side. An acyclic hydrocarbon does not connect itself into a ring. We will not be looking at the difference between cyclic and acyclic hydrocarbons any further, except to mention that there will be some differences in the way that we name them. Within aliphatic hydrocarbons, there are three major classes. The first one is the alkane, the second is the alkene, and the third is the alkyne. Let's look at each of those. When we look at the word alkane, We'll notice that there are two parts to the name. The first part, alk, stands for hydrocarbon chain. The second part, ane, means that it is all single bonded. So what we know about alkanes is that they are a type of saturated hydrocarbon that have only single bonds between the carbons. There is a general formula, but we will come back to that later. And again, with the alkenes, we see a similar notation. The alk stands for carbon chain, and the ene in this case, is telling us that there is at least one double bond. 
So alkenes are unsaturated because they have at least one double bond between the carbons. And finally, when we look at the alkynes, the start again begins with alk, which indicates it's, it's a carbon chain, and then the ein, the Y-N-E, stands for a triple bond. What that means is this is a type of unsaturated hydrocarbon that has at least one triple bond between the carbon atoms. Next, we'll look at the three general formulas. The formula for an alkane is C, subscript N, H, subscript 2N, plus 2, where the N stands for the number of carbons present. There are two easy ways to determine the number of carbons in a compound. The first one is to look at the formula and see how many carbons are listed. The second method uses its name. So if I tell you the name is octane, that tells you that there are eight carbons. Using octane for our example, we would see that we would get C, subscript 8, H, subscript 2 times 8, plus 2. And that is C8, H, 16 plus 2, or C8, H, 18. For the alkenes, we see the formula is CNH2N. In this case, if we were to look at octene, we would use C8, H2 times 8, and that would be C8, H16. In the case of alkynes, another unsaturated compound, we see the formula is CNH2N minus 2. And if we took the case of octine, we would get C8, H2 times 8 minus 2, or CNH16 minus 2, which is C8H14. This chart helps us to compare the three aliphatic hydrocarbons, the alkanes, the alkenes, and the alkynes. The first section looks at bonding. In the case of alkanes, it has all carbon-carbon single bonds. In the case of alkenes, we see at least one carbon-carbon double bond. All other bonds are going to be carbon-carbon single bonds. In the alkynes, we see at least one carbon-carbon triple bond, with the others being carbon-carbon single bonds. Now we'll look at the general formulas for the three aliphatic hydrocarbons. Notice that there is one major difference between them. For the alkanes, we see that the formula is CnH2n plus 2. In the alkenes, it's CnH2n. And finally, for the alkynes, it's CnH2 minus 2, where the number at the end is what's varying. As we increase the number of multiple bonds, we decrease the number of hydrogens. Recall that n is equal to the number of carbons present in the formula. Now let's look at the saturation for each of these classes of compounds. Recall that saturated means that they are all carbon-carbon single bonds, and that unsaturated means that it has some kind of carbon-carbon multiple bond. Here it's easy to see that the alkanes are the saturated types of compounds, and the alkenes and the alkynes are both unsaturated. It is important to note that when we want to find out from a formula whether a compound is saturated or unsaturated, we will always want to compare the formula for the compound to the formula for an alkane, dependent upon the number of carbons present. If the number of hydrogen matches what we would expect for an alkane, the substance is saturated. Otherwise, if there are fewer hydrogens, it is unsaturated. Now let's look at how we would draw the full structural formulas. Let's start by putting in the carbon chain. Here we're going to use only two carbons just to use a simple sample. So for alkane, we're going to draw two carbons with a single bond between them. For the alkene, two carbons with a double bond between them. And finally, for the alkynes, two carbons with a triple bond between them. Now, let's add the hydrogens. As we look at the first carbon, you'll notice that it has one bond to carbon. That means it can add on three more hydrogens. The same is true of the second carbon. We can add three hydrogens. When we look at the alkenes, we see that that carbon already has two bonds to another carbon. That means there's two spots left to put in hydrogens. And the same for the other side. We see two spots left for the hydrogens. Notice that the total number of bonds for each carbon is four, as expected. And finally, we'll look at the alkynes. 
When we look at the first carbon, we see that there are three bonds currently on that carbon, leaving one spot left for a hydrogen. And we see that on the other carbon also. Notice that as we add a multiple bond, we remove a hydrogen from each carbon. So we've removed two hydrogens total from the alkene and four hydrogens total from the alkyne, which we can see in the general formula above. Now we can look at how we write them as condensed structural formulas. For the alkane, we're going to see that we just write what we see, carbon, three hydrogens, a carbon, and three hydrogens. For the alkene, we're going to write a carbon and two hydrogens, then we're going to show the double bond, and then another carbon and two hydrogens. And for the alkyne, it'll be a carbon, a hydrogen that's attached, the show the triple bond, and then write the next carbon and its hydrogen that's attached. The main thing to notice here is that in the alkane, we do not show a bond, but in the other two, they are so important that we decide to show those bonds. The final section on this page is just to show a few more calculations to show how to use the general formula. I'm going to be providing the number of carbons present by telling you the name of the compound, and then from there you'll be able to figure out how many hydrogens should be in the formula. Let's start with propane. So prop, in the name propane, tells us that there are three carbons. That tells us that N is equal to three. In our formula, we will have C, three, H, two times three plus two, which is C, three, H, eight. In propene, again, we have three carbons. N is still equal to three, and we will have C, three, H, six. And finally, in the alkyne, propyne, we will have C3H4. Now let's try heptane, heptene, and heptine. In all cases, the hept means seven. So our formula for the alkane will be C7H2 times seven, which is 14, plus two. So C7H16. For our alkene, we will get C7H2 times 7, and that will be C7H14. And finally, for our alkyne, we will have C7H2 times 7 minus 2, which becomes C7H12. Now we're going to look at some formulas of some compounds. We're going to ask the question, is it saturated? Then we'll look at the formula. And assuming that it's an acyclic hydrocarbon, we'll decide whether it is an alkane, an alkene, or an alkyne. In order to begin this, you may want to recall the general formula for alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Let's look at these four structures. The first thing we'll want to observe is what would the formula be if it were saturated? That means we need to look to the alkanes to see what the formula would be. Then we compare the number of hydrogens. If the number is the same, we have a saturated alkane. If the number is different, we will have an unsaturated compound. Next, we'll decide if it's an alkene or an alkyne. To decide if it's an alkane, an alkene, or an alkyne, we will just look at the difference. If the difference is zero, it's an alkane. If the difference in hydrogens is two, it's an alkene, and if the difference in hydrogens is Four, it's an alkyne. Let's start with compound A. So for compound A, we see that there are 12 carbons, which means that we should have 2 times 12 plus 2, 26 hydrogens. We see that the difference between that is two hydrogens. That means that this one is unsaturated because the difference is not zero. We notice that the difference is two. That makes this an alkene. Now let's look at compound B. Here we see that we have 200 carbons. That means that we should have 2 times 200 plus 2, giving us a total number of hydrogens of 402. Here we see the difference then is 4 hydrogens. That means that this one is unsaturated, and with a difference of 4, we have an alkyne. Now let's look at letter C. Here we have 196 carbons, 
find the number of hydrogens. We have 2 times 196 plus 2, which is 394. That is the same number. Our difference is 0. And so we have 0 difference. This is a saturated compound. And we know that it is an alkane. And finally, let's look at compound D. Here we can see that we have only five carbons. So if it were an alkane, that would mean we would have C5, H2 times 5 plus 2, which would be 12. And so we should have C5H12. The difference between these is 12 minus 8, which is 4. That means that we have an unsaturated compound because it is not equal to 0. And since the difference is 4, we do have an alkyne.